Hello everyone! Yes, this is Night Fox. Yes, it's a Tech Tuesday. Yes, I am wearing the same shirt that I did last week. So recently, I've gotten a lot of comments from you all asking how do I set up and do live streams using various different software applications. So I decided it was time that we talked about it. So let's dive in and figure out how to live stream using the Elgato game capture software, starting with where you need to go to download it. Okay, so from this point, you should have already plugged in your new Elgato gaming capture card. What we need to do now is go to the internet. So I'm gonna pull up a Google Chrome page. You can pull up any browser, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and we're gonna go to elgato.com slash support. And this is gonna take us to the download page so we can download the software that we're going to need uh, to do our streaming and recording. Now from this point, you should be able to figure out what Elgato capture card you have. I have the HD60, you might just have the HD, or you could have the new awesome HD60 Pro. Uh, you'll choose which one of these you have, click on your product, and it'll take you to the download version. Now from here you'll need to decide, okay, do I have a Windows, do I have a Mac, uh, wh which one do I have? And in my case, I have the Windows version, so we're going to go ahead and download it. It's going to start everything here, once it finishes the download process. Um, it's going to allow me to install it with the installer. So let's go ahead and wait for it to get done. There we go. We're going to open it up and run it. And this should take just a few minutes. We're going to run through the process real quick and hopefully we'll get it all set up from here. So a few side notes while this is installing, it's going to take a minute to actually run through the process. Um, I want you to take a look. When you actually figure out, say you're trying to figure out what kind of game capture card that you're wanting to get, uh, you need to take a look at the system requirements. Um, and you can do that just by going to elgato.com support, clicking on each device like we did. Uh, so in this case, we clicked on the HD60. And if you look down here at the bottom on the HD60, it has the system requirements. I have to have a PC that has Windows seven or later on it. Um, you also have to have at least four gigabytes of RAM. The one you probably needed to pay most attention to is the second generation Intel Core i5 processor that you're going to need uh, for the game capture itself. Um, so you can take a look at all of the different system requirements that you're going to need. You can back out, go into each one, figure out which one is best suited for your computer and get that one accordingly. So it looks like we're ready to go. I'm going to click yes to allow the user account control to install it. Um, I'll be right back once this is installed. Okay, so as you can see, we have the game capture software installed and ready to go. We double clicked on the desktop icon that it created. It looks something sort of like this. And as where I'm recording this, this is actually the 2.2 update, uh, which is the current version. There's actually a new version coming out, which is going to be the 3.0. That's going to add a whole bunch of new features. Uh, one of the main ones being chroma key, which allows all those people who love to do face cam on t streams uh, to have a green screen in the back to where they can actually use the chroma key to delete the green screen out and have just their uh, picture of their face uh, on the screen without anything in the background. Uh, but this is what we're working with right now. This is the 2.2 version. This is what it looks like. Um, as you can see in the part right here is the preview screen, which this is the part that everybody in the stream is going to see. Um, and if you want to know what they will be seeing, this is what you will need to look at. Now, the other thing that you need to notice is if for some reason over here on the right, it does not have game capture capture card and it says like no device detected and this doesn't have a preview chances are your cabling was not hooked up correctly and you probably need to go back and check it uh, but for now it looks like everything's good to go uh, one other thing to note if the preview is turned off right here um, you can turn it on from this button right here at the bottom and on top of that if you are having like a lower performance computer and you notice like some lag issues or uh, when you go back to do like a recording and your video corrupted um, you can turn this off and that should help that a little bit maybe help it render a little bit better but there's some other things that you can do um, so let's go ahead and jump over into this little section right here where all the information is uh, and we're gonna run through this as quickly as possible to try to set up a 
stream and get going with it. So let's start over here with the device and as you can see we are running this. Let's go ahead and click on this little uh, tools button and the only thing that we really need to worry about is the very first thing and so what we need to do we need to determine what we're going to be streaming with what device and there's a drop down you can choose from we are going to be using the Xbox 360 but you can use the one you can use a PS4 a PS3 a Wii Wii U even an iPad um, or a PC which is something that maybe I can touch base on in another video uh, but we're going to use the 360 right now and so the other thing that you need to worry about is the HD uh, profile, which is going to be the audio in which this is going to be recorded uh, and the video itself. So I usually like to keep mine on 1080 for recordings, but for streaming purposes, because there's a lot going on, um, I've usually got uh, the, the stream chat up, I've got the thing recording, I've got it streaming itself, there's a lot of stuff going on, and to keep from any kind of issues coming up, I usually like to keep it down at HD 720, and also leave this this unchecked which is the last 60 FPS which is frames per second um, so that's the main thing with all of that that's all good to go the other thing that you probably need to worry about is game audio and you can turn it up and down just by holding and dragging um, I usually like to keep mine a little bit lower because I don't want it to interfere with my commentary um, so I usually keep mine about 15 negative 15 decibels and that's usually good enough for me uh, now the other thing that you need to worry about this is probably the most important section whenever you do the live streaming so let's go ahead and I'm going to maximize the window so we can see a little bit better here and the live streaming account which is where your stream is going to go to online as you can see I've got a Night Fox test account that I use for YouTube if you don't have anything here and it says no account all you have to do is go to plus and choose which one you want to do if you're going to stream to YouTube you just click here sign in if you want to stream to Twitch same thing I uh, will go ahead and do that real quick it's just Mr. Night Fox and then my password is none of your business <laughs> <laughs> so we'll go ahead and add that and it should actually change it over to Twitch. Now the cool thing is you can actually have multiple accounts on here. So if you're one of those people that like to stream on both Twitch and YouTube, all you have to do is just come to this little drop down and pick which one you want to do. So we're going to do it on YouTube and um, everything else is pretty much good setting wise. We need to name the stream. I'm just going to name this test stream and uh, that should be all that we need to do here so whenever we go to our YouTube page and the stream is listed the title of the stream will be shown as what this is right here uh, so the other thing that you need to worry about with the account is this little section right here which is what the stream frame rate resolution and all that stuff is going to be um, so I'm actually going to leave mine at 30 FPS and 720p if you have a high performance gaming computer you're more than welcome to try to ten do 1080p at 60 FPS. Um, keep in mind though if you do experience a lot of frame drops or a lot of lag it's probably due to that. Uh, the other thing that you need to worry about of course is the bit rate and that's the rate at which the uh, Elgato actually pushes all of your video over to the stream itself and the thing that you need to keep in mind is you need to know what your upload speed is on your internet. To do that there's actually a pretty cool tool that you can use called www speedtest.net and uh, let's just let's just go there real quick so let's go ahead and test it go to speedtest.net we'll just go here begin the test and it's going to try to ping one of the local servers that you use and you'll get what is called the download speed and the upload speed and the download speed is not really important um, the upload speed is what you need to actually be paying attention to so I'm going to let this thing run for a minute and uh, we'll see how we do Alright, and as we can see, our upload speed is actually really good for my area right now. It's uh, 12 megabytes per second, so that, that works perfectly. So if you come back over here at the little bitrate, as you notice as we dial it in, you can see how the bitrate changes, um, from, and it goes all the way up to 8 for my instance, and that's perfect. Uh, as long as this number is actually lower than what the upload speed is, so in my case it's 12, yours might only be like 2 or 3. Um, keep in mind that you probably want to do like 1 less than what it says. So if you have a 2 megabyte upload speed, uh, you probably want to keep it down in the 1 range. Or else you're probably going to experience a lot of lag issues and such like that. But we're going to go ahead and crank it all the way up because we have the capabilities to do so. And so this part is done and ready to go. Now the next part that we're going to take a look at is the live commentary section. And this is where you're going to be putting in your audio that you're going to be speaking into during the stream. Um, now I always choose my Logitech G930 headset. Uh, 
and that's what we use to do the streaming. Uh, if you'll notice, there's a level thing right here and a game which actually can do a um, you can you can actually raise or lower your voice depending on how the stream is acting. If they say your audio is too low, you can actually use this to dial it in. Uh, but notice the level thing right here is actually not on. It's I'm talking and it's not responding, and that's because this button right here, the commentary button, is not listed as on. If I click on it, you can see now that the levels start moving, it recognizes my voice and we're good to go. So for some reason, say somebody comes in the house and your room and starts talking to you and you don't really want to hear them to hear that conversation, you can just click this button right here that mutes your chat uh, and the people watching the stream actually won't see what's going on or they'll see what's going on but they won't hear what's going on so you'll be able to have a private conversation and then when you get done you just turn it right back on and just go on for it. Uh, so that's about everything that we need to do as far as setting up the stream. The other thing that a lot of people ask me is, how do you do overlays? And if you look right here in this little section, you'll notice that there's a stream command. And there's like four or five, there's like, well, there's eight. <laughs> there's eight, nine, there's nine different, actually, functions that you can do here. Um, this is just the standard function where it's just the game itself, no overlays, nothing on there. I've actually got this one here for when I need to go take a break. Um, I got like, my little chibi fox having a waffle, having a good time, and this allows me to let people know in the stream that I'm going to be right back, I'm just taking a quick break. So how do I get this on here, or how do I do other overlays, or even a webcam? So let's start with the webcam for those that actually want to do it. Um, so you go up here, you go to click on two, one is the default, I recommend you at least leave one just blank, um, that way you can switch back and forth and you don't have to worry about taking things on and off for when you record, because if you tried to record with this, it would obviously record that part as well and that's not fun so I always recommend leaving the first one blank so let's go over to the second one and uh, let's say I want to do a face cam so let's go ahead and add a face cam so you go to the edit scenes you click on this little camera and it's gonna come up with the camera function and as you can see it should be popping up the camera here in just a second and there we go there's me there's the camera hey hello <laughs> hey stream how's it going night Fox here yeah, we're just hanging out in our room. There's not much going on with this, but this is what you can do to add a camera into your um, live stream or whatnot. But I don't, I don't really want a camera, so I'm gonna go ahead and save it. Um, if that way, I can, if I do decide to keep it later, I can come right back to it. Um, but let's go over to three, and let's say, let's say we just want to do something simple, something easy. And so I've actually created a ping file. Uh, keep in mind, a ping is basically it's an image that is transparent, so you can actually have things going on and you don't have like a boxy looking picture um, so I've got a ping file that I made of a text that just has my YouTube URL in it so if I just add that click on it open it up you can actually move it around you can resize it how you want to I'm not gonna dive too much into that because uh, these are just examples so if you wanted to add something there uh, but say you wanted to add something like something went wrong in your stream and you needed to go into your Xbox settings or whatever kind of settings you're actually streaming with and the settings that you have might be a little bit personal. They might have a personal, a lot of personal information in there, like credit card numbers or an email address that you don't want seen. Uh, you can actually go to the edit scenes and add a JPEG picture. Uh, I like to do mine that I made, which is my technical bleep loops. And while I'm doing this, um, I can actually save this scene. It'll pop up here. So if I'm streaming, something goes wrong. Say I disconnect from Xbox Live and I want to reconnect. I can just click on this right here. It'll jump over to it. And then I can go do stuff. And, um, and when I come back obviously you'll see that there's other things on the screen so they they won't see what's going on behind the scenes they'll be able to hear you still um, but they won't see what's going on because the JPEG image will be over it um, but if you want to be more fancy kind of like if you've seen some of my streams um, you can actually come over here and uh, what I recommend you do is to look into actually making a live stream overlay uh, you can do it from YouTube there's a lot of different tutorials out there I use Photoshop to make mine there's other people that can actually make it for you if you go to a website called Fiverr.com, uh, people do these things for like $5, and it's really, really well custom-made stuff. Um, I'll leave a link down to in the description for that, as well as the speedtest.net, um, everything that you're going to need website-wise to go ahead and do the live streams. And I actually made this one myself, but you can, you're more than welcome to take it as an example here. It's just a uh, 1280 by 720 uh, ping 
PNG picture um, that I made the overlay here and we'll just go ahead and save it and so now every time I have this little overlay obviously I've got the uh, Elgato in the background with the game that I need and then over it I've got the overlay here so everything's about ready that's how you do the overlays it's pretty simple you can customize them to put pretty much anything you want on them like I've got my chibi here with the fox eating the <laughs> eating the waffle and everything's about ready to go uh, another side note is you can actually use um, this streaming software and record your stream at the same time so for instance you wanted to upload a twitch stream to YouTube later on you can just press this little record button as well as the stream button both can go on at the same time and that will allow you to upload a stream to YouTube so we're about ready to go the only thing that we need to do we need to turn on our commentary uh, keep in mind that if you do that you want to mute your your uh, chat right here that way you, there's not a weird echo and then over on the stream itself you want to mute the chat on the stream that way there's not an echo either um, but other than that you should be good to go we'll go ahead and click the stream button and it should take about a minute or so but you'll see it go green here in just a second and then you'll see a little thing on here that says on air and that's it we're ready to go so from this point we're gonna actually click this button right here which is gonna take us to our live stream itself Itself, and you should see us do a Night Fox test live stream popping up right here. We'll just go ahead and view it on the watch page. Uh, this actually takes you to the live control room. You can go ahead and click here on the view watch page and it should take you to the stream itself. And you'll see that we have the stream up and ready to go. This is good. This is what we need to see. Uh, the other thing you need to keep in mind is there's about a 20 to 30 second delay that you have to kind of be aware of. Um, but other than that, you mute this like I said and that's it. That's all there is to it. We are ready to stream. I'm actually going to put one more thing right here real quick that I like to do. We're going to edit the scene. I'm going to add one more picture and we're going to do the starting soon image and that's to let people know that I will be coming. I will be starting soon. Get your popcorn ready. It's about to happen. So if you come over here you'll see it change in here in just a second. There's a little bit of a delay um, and there we go. It changed over. We're ready to go. We're going to end the video here. Next week, I'm going to show you guys how to actually add music and a dual commentary to the Elgato streaming service. But that's going to do it for me this video. Hope you all enjoyed. Hopefully you found this a little bit uh, informative. And if you have any questions, please be sure to let me know in the comments section below. Or send me an email or something like that, and I'll try to help you out. That's going to do it for me, guys. Until next time, stay foxy, everybody. And I will see you all later. Bye!